What's going on everybody? We're gonna squeeze in a quick little video that I'm calling 3D printed downforce. I 3D printed a few parts that are gonna add some downforce to my car and we're gonna go ahead and install them and kinda discuss how they work. All right, so here's the 3D printed parts that we're going to be installing. They're gonna be taking the place of our splitter side plate and our splitter flap. Now, I was just in the wind tunnel with this car, hence, you know, all the uh, wool tufts are still on it. And we have actual numbers for my car. I'm gonna throw some numbers out there. Don't expect yours to be the exact same, but it'll kind of give you an idea of, you know, what's going on and, you know, a range you can maybe expect. My last video, I went over having to go back to my Toyo RA1s to be legal for the class I'm going to be running in. Last year when I ran the RA1s with the downforce on this thing pretty much like set to kill, I exploded one of the tires at Lime Rock. Now it was sort of an old tire. Lime Rock really punishes your left hand tires. Um, but I'm actually going to slightly de-aero the car, take I don't know, 200 pounds of downforce off of it, uh, just to kind of give me that little bit of margin. Plus VIR, I don't think is a, you know, huge downforce track, so kind of might be a little bit of a win-win. Hence the reason I'm gonna be doing this. Now my old setup was a, one of our splitter flaps. These are available on our website, along with our tunnels and canards, all that stuff, which sat right about here, right? And then our splitter flap, you know what? I can't do this one-handed, so I'm gonna put you guys down. So our splitter flap, I'm sorry, our splitter side plate goes right about here. A Little bit of a gap for the air to exit right here. And then the flap, which mounted to this little mount right here and here, which could be angled if you needed to. Again, just helping create some downforce, exit air out of this tunnel on the wheel well. And that setup, the flap added about 60, I think it was like 62 pounds of downforce at 100 miles an hour. And then adding the flap to it brought the total up to just over 100 pounds. So about another 40 pounds of downforce putting the flap here at 100 miles an hour. So that little setup right there is good for about 100 pounds of downforce on my splitter with the tunnel. And if you watched our wind tunnel video i'll put a tag of that up here we actually removed these we have a baseline run of pretty much just how you see it with nothing here and then we ended up building in the tunnel we kind of just wanted to get an idea we ended up removing all of this and adding a tire blocker because as the air kind of comes down the car the tire face is kind of right about here and it's pretty common knowledge that anytime you block the tire face, you're going to pick up downforce and usually increase the efficiency of the car. In the wind tunnel, removing all of this, adding a little bit of a tire blocker, we lost 50 pounds at 100 miles an hour, but effectively gained, a gained 50 pounds from our baseline, which is no side plates or flaps. I hope this is all kind of making sense. So yeah, so I can effectively say at about 100 miles an hour, I'm removing about 50 pounds of downforce off the front of the car. And I'm also going to be adjusting the wing, which it's actually already adjusted. You can kind of see the mark, but I make little notes of what mark I'm on. So I pulled a little bit of wing angle out. <clears throat> so the aero balance should be pretty good. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, so here is the 3D printed part. Is this this side? Yeah, this is this side. So it might be a little bit hard to do right now, but it's going to go right about here up to this 3D printed part. I did a video on these little air curtain, air skirts. Um, I'll put a tag of that up here as well. So I need to remove this because we're not going to be running the splitter flap. And then this should just kind of nestle down in there right about right about there which from the front as you can see from a side shot so it'll kind of block the tire and get the outwash going out sideways beyond the tire which then will allow the splitter tunnels to kind of extract air a little bit easier and then the other part 
is these blue ones. I just printed them in blue because I printed them overnight. And I have I have two printers. Um, and one was loaded up with blue, so is what it is. These are gonna be taking the place of this carbon gurney flap right here. Uh, again, it's taped on because we were at the wind tunnel. We just, you know, put it in place real quick. But the issue, I don't really know if it's an issue because these gurneys, again, being in the wind tunnel, we have numbers on the car without these little gurneys or wickers, whatever you want to call them, um, and numbers with them. But this one, since it's a 90 degree gurney on a hood that's faced like this, you can see it's actually, it's facing forward. So air is coming this way. It's hitting the gurney and almost wanting to come backwards. So this is going to go this way. So you can see it's more of a gentle ramp and should allow the air to kind of keep going. So my guess is these will be a efficiency bump. Now these Again, they're taped down, um, but these are 3D printed as well. So I did a video of how I made these. I'll put a tag of that up here as well. Um, but the gurneys from no gurney to gurneys picked up, I think it was 14 or 15 pounds of downforce, plus much better pressure drop across the radiator. So we had probes in front of the radiator and behind it. So not only are you picking up a little bit of downforce, you're picking up better cooling. If you have too much cooling, you could just tape up the grill of the bumper, which is kind of one of the last runs we did. We taped up the inner cooler and a little bit of the grill to kind of get a number on that. Um, I forget what the last run we did at the wind tunnel was. But, <clears throat> so yeah, so I'm gonna kind of pull all the old stuff on, maybe just go over installing it real quick the front gurneys i'm actually just going to use a two-faced tape and stick them on and then the rear i did this with these little uh uh what do you want to call them air skirts air curtains um but when i 3d model these you can just take a drawing of this backside and just print yourself out a template exactly where the holes go so that way once you line it once you line it up exactly where it goes, just mark your holes, drill them, and you know it'll line up perfectly with the part. So yeah, I'm gonna knock these out real quick. So it's a real quick little simple project to add. Well, I'm removing downforce because I'm not running these big side plates and flaps, but if you had nothing, so about 50, at 100 miles an hour, you're probably adding 60 pounds or so of downforce to your car. Um, which is you know it's going to be a noticeable amount so yeah i'm going to knock these out and then show you the finished project product As I finish mounting these, I gotta load the car up and head to VIR. Uh, first race of the season, so I gotta like get it tech, do a whole bunch of stuff, which I'm not excited about because this is what it looks like outside. It's basically flurrying. Slash, slash, rain, sleet. Yeah, this isn't. Uh, <laughs> I'm headed to the track, but it's not gonna be a fun day. <laughs> All right, so that tackles the new gurney in front of the intercooler opening. Uh, it's a little bit taller than the old setup. And as you can see, it does kind of cover some of the radiator. So hopefully it kind of helps out, you know, part of that as well. Um, if I end up getting too much cooling, like I mentioned earlier, I could always tape up the grill a little bit. Um, so that's always a performance benefit of increased cooling. And then our tire blockers. So if we look dead on, they line up pretty good with what we printed before. And pretty good on this curve. <clears throat> so not too bad lining up 
um, you know, just from taking a picture and a few measurements and kind of like trying to trace it on the CAD program. Uh, so here it is from behind. So yeah, so that's about it for this one. That's where I'm going to wrap it up, try and keep this one a little bit more uh, short and sweet. If you got any questions, please comment below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and please consider hitting that subscribe button. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.